All right, so uh, so this starts a new chapter. Um, so we're actually skipping 10.1 and 10.2. Um, those sections are going to be on just the basics of solving linear equations. Um, and so it's pretty much things that you would have seen in algebra classes, and it's the, kind of the traditional um, introduction of of solving systems of equations. So we're gonna we're gonna see kind of more advanced way. Um, and I don't think if you, I don't think if you need to know um, all the specifics of those sections in order to be able to do this. Uh, it's more, um, yes, as long as you know what kind of the context of what we're talking about. So when we talk about systems of equations, we're talking about um, two systems or two equations where we're looking for um a solution that will work in both equations. And as far as how you would solve these in an algebra class, um, that's not really important for what we're doing here. We're gonna we're gonna kind of look at this in a new way. Um, <clears throat> and we're gonna use what's called a matrix for this. And so kind of the core the correspondence here, a linear system is two or more equations. Uh, probably most of the time in your algebra class you've looked at two equations, maybe three. Um, but it could be any number. It could be two, two or more equations. And you want to see, typically, is there a solution that will work for all of the equations? And there are different ways to do this. You could do it. You could solve these by graphing. You could solve them uh, by the addition method or the substitution method. Um, so if you remember this from algebra, you've learned a few different ways. But we're going we're gonna to kind of learn a new way here. And so we're introducing this idea of a matrix. And so a matrix is really just looking at the coefficients that are in the equations that we're talking about. And so if we have this linear system here, uh, we can take the coefficients 2, negative 1, and 5 and put them in a row on a matrix here. And then the coefficients 1, 4, 7 go in the matrix here. And so we have this um, thing called a matrix, and we don't really have to worry about the, the x and the y. And so uh, there are a lot of things you can do with these, and we'll, we'll look at some of these in the next couple of sections. Uh, but for now, just kind of think about this as, as the coefficients from the linear system. And so, of course, this column here is the x column. This column here is the y column. And then this column here is the solution, or the, the right side of the equation, if you will. So a matrix is an, an array of numbers and it, you could really have any number of rows you could have any number of columns and uh, it, it would still be a matrix <clears throat> so we say that the matrix has dimension m by m by n and so that the first number is the number of rows and then the second number is the number of columns and then each entry in the matrix uh, we could generally write, if we're just kind of generally speaking of a matrix, um, we can use these indices here. Um, so the first number will tell you what row you're on. The second number will tell you what column you're on. So if we're on, if A sub 2, 3, that's the second row and then the third column. Um, and so that's kind of the, the system for the notation with those. Um, <clears throat> if I can scroll down here. And so when we talk about dimension, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about how many rows and columns. So if we if we see this matrix here that we saw at the top of the page, uh, actually, that's not the same one, but this matrix here, we have two rows, three columns. So we would say this is a two by three matrix. This matrix here, we have one row and we have four columns. And so this would be a one by four. So that's all we're, if we talk about the dimension, it's just, how wide and how tall, I guess, is the is the matrix? How many rows and how many columns? <clears throat> All right, so we can um, use these, like I said, to solve uh, systems of equations. And the first step to doing that is to take this, take the equations, and write what's called an augmented matrix, uh, which is which is just taking the coefficients. So. If we take the coefficients of this one, so we have six, negative two, negative one, four. Now this one, we do not have a Y, so we need to put a zero for the Y column. So one, zero, three, 
one, and then in this one, we don't have an X, so we need to put a zero for the X. We have zero, seven, one, five, and that is our augmented matrix. And so now we can use some methods that we're gonna learn in this section for solving this equation. Um, and personally, I, I, I prefer I prefer these ways. Um, I think they're a little bit easier to work with, especially if you get, we're, we're gonna be working with three equations. If you have two equations, probably the way you do it in algebra is easy enough. Uh, if you have three equations or more than using the matrices is, uh, is easier, I think. And so we use what's called elementary row operations. And so these are these are the legal things, the allowed things that you can do uh, with this matrix to kind of in the same way that you know if you're solving an equation, you can subtract the same thing from both sides uh, or add the same thing to both sides and it doesn't change the equation or you can divide. Um, same thing here. So these are just the operations that uh, we can we are allowed to do, and it does not change the matrix. So we can we can add a multiple of one row to another. We can multiply any row by non-zero constant, and it does not change the matrix. Or we can just switch two rows. So we can we can make you know obviously if you make this the third equation and that the first equation, so you switch these two equations, it doesn't change the system. So it's still going to have the same solution if if it has a solution. So um, first thing we're going to do is write this as an augmented matrix. So we're just going to write all of the coefficients by row. We're not going to change any of the order. And then we'll see what we can do from there. Um, so the first thing you normally want to do is um, see it. So going by row, so that's really, you don't do anything by column. So if, if you had a common factor in the columns, for instance, two is a common factor in this column, but you, you can't factor out a two. You cannot do anything by columns like that. But if you do have a row where there's a common factor, you could divide out that common factor just to make the number smaller and easier to work with. But in this case, uh, none of the rows have a common factor. So um, we will just start kind of working with these row operations. Um, and so what we're, what the first goal is, uh, we want to get zeros in these two spots here. So we kind of want this number here to be the only uh, non-zero number. And so the way we can do this, we're going to use this uh, number, step one here, add a multiple of one row to another, or subtract, you know, if you if you add a, a negative multiple to another, then you're you're subtracting. So um, let's call this equation one, equation two, and equation three. And so what we're going to do, we're going to subtract equation one minus equation two. And so equation one or row one is going to stay the same. And then we're going to replace row two with this row minus this row. So, um, so you, it's just basic arithmetic. Um, now, one thing about this section is it has a lot of lot of arithmetic in it, um, and it's very easy to make mistakes, uh, just simple mistakes. So be very careful when you're doing these. Um, I even a lot of times will use the calculator, even though these this is just very basic um, basic math here. Um, so what what we're looking at, we have. Um, in fact, I have all the answers here because it's very easy to make a mistake. And I'm, that way, that way, if I do make a mistake, I can see that I made it. Um, so hope, hopefully I won't. Um, but it's very easy to do that. So we're going to take row one minus row two. So one minus one is zero. Negative one minus two is negative three. Three minus negative two is going to be five. And then four minus 10 is going to be negative six. All right, um, so we have a zero here. Now we want a zero here. So how would you make, how would you manipulate these three rows in some way so that you can get a zero here? So we're, we're gonna take three times this row and then subtract this row. Or you could do, you could do negative three times this row and then add this row. Um, so we'll do 
uh, three times the first row minus the third row. So we have three times one minus three, and that gives us, that's what we want. So we want a zero there. And then whatever comes over here is just, it is what it is. All right, so negative or three times negative one minus negative one, uh, that gives us a two. Three times negative one, um, three times negative one. I think I did this the other way. Yeah, I did, I did this the other way. Um, okay, when I was working this out. Three times negative one is negative one plus one, so that'd be negative two. Three times three is nine minus five, that would be a four. Three times four is 12, minus 14 is a negative two. All right. Now what we want to do is, and essentially what we're what, what we're trying to do here, what we're what our steps are going to be here is we want these three entries here to be the so we want we don't have to do anything with that row, but we want this one to be the first non-zero entry in this row. So we need that one to be a zero. We want this one to be the first non-zero entry in this row, which means these two need to be zero. So we've already got that one to be a zero. We need to get this one to be a zero now. So really these three entries here in this bottom corner are what we want to be to make a zero. Um, and once we can do that, we'll we'll see what happens next. So for this step, we only need to make that number be a zero. And so the easiest way to do that would be to multiply row one by negative two, and then add row three. So row, row one times negative two, and then add row three. So we're not doing anything with the top two rows. Those are the way we want them. That one's going to be, uh, actually, that is not what we want to do. Let's uh, let me skip that. We're going to work with two and three. I apologize for that. Um, and actually, what we could do before this, so we have the common factor with row three. So let's divide these by negative two. So, um, so row three divided by negative two. So that would be negative two divided by negative two is one. 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1. All right, so now we can work with this. Um, and we'll and I'll talk about the mistake I almost made. Um, so let's, we're only going to be working with row 3. So let's copy the first two rows here. And so imagine if, so if we did what I did here, where we multiply row one by something and add it to row three. So we do negative two times row one plus row three. Well, then that would be negative two plus zero, which would give us a negative two here, which undoes what we did before. So at this point, we really only need to work with row two and three. Um, so let's do row two plus three times row three. And so we have zero plus three times zero. That's going to, still going to be a zero, which is what we want. We don't want to change that one, which is why we cannot work with row one at this point. Uh, row two plus three times row three. So negative three plus three times one, that gives us a zero, which is what we want. Five plus three times negative two, that would give us a negative one. And then negative six plus three times one, that would give us a negative three. Okay, so now um, we've we've pretty much got this matrix the way we want. Um, yeah, let's leave this here so we can still see the equation. Um, so now you can kind of imagine this as if we wrote, so we started with the system of actual equations. We wrote the augmented matrix. Now imagine we went the other way. So we let's take this and write a system of equations. So we'd have, let's start with this one. We have negative Z equals negative three. So that means when you solve this one, we get Z equals three. So that is what Z equals for this uh, system of equations. 
Now look at row two, that would be negative three y plus five z equals negative six. Z is three, so let's plug in three. And then we can solve this equation for y. So that'd be negative three uh, plus 15, move that over. So negative three equals negative 21. So that means that y equals seven. And then same thing, now we have the first row, x minus y plus three z equals four. Plug in what we know x and y, or y and z to be. So we have x uh, minus seven plus nine, so that'd be a plus two. And we get x equals two. And so there is our solution. And we write these as ordered ordered pairs or ordered triples or ordered uh, quadruples if, if you have that many equations. But this would be an ordered triple. So x, y, z for the ordered triple. And that is the solution. So when, when you write these on web assign, you got to write them as an ordered triple. Uh, so x, y, z in that order. Um, but that's that's essentially what we do. Um, we'll do a lot several more examples through here, but the, I mean that is the basic of it. That's the basics of it, and um, there's not really too much more to it. Um, as long as you can follow what we did here, so essentially you write the augmented matrix, which is just the coefficients uh, from the equations, and then you really want these three entries to be zero. And you do this by using the row operations. And once you get that, once you get these three to be zero, which is what we had here, then you can, if you need to, uh, write these as equations and then you can solve and just start from the bottom and work your way up. And then you can back substitute, uh, which is probably what you did in algebra class when you had, a, when you had two equations. And maybe you did this with three. Um, I think some algebra classes may get there if you, probably algebra two did that. Um, but we'll look at more examples in the next videos and a couple more, a couple more concepts.